Hello everyone. So we often get questions about what settings we use for different targets we image outside. And you can view all the settings for these for each of these types of targets on our online gallery. But in this video, we're just going to continue explaining our reasoning why. So we'll discuss the Moon, the Milky Way, uh, star clusters, nebulae, and galaxies. Let's get to it. The Moon. For this target, we need to tighten our aperture so that our big bright satellite doesn't look all white and washed out in the photo. An F number between 11 and 16 usually works pretty well. The shutter speed needs to be fast, because you are, in general, just using a tripod and not tracking the moon on a motorized mount. We like to do either 1 over 125 or 1 over 250 depending on the phase of the moon during the night. Both usually work great. As for the ISO, the lower it is, the less noise you will have, so 100 is the best you can choose. Although there is almost no noticeable difference between 100 and 200. We also like to tweak some other things such as the crispness, which we put to the max so that the craters are as visible and defined as possible. We also use spot metering to focus as precisely as we can. So let's answer the question about what ISO to pick for the next targets in this list. So choosing the ISO number is going to be dependent on two things. Your camera and the temperature where you're going to be taking pictures. For us, our basic go-to number for ISO is 400 for hot summer nights and 1600 for when the weather's a little more chilly. You can go a little bit higher, but we wouldn't recommend going over 3200 ISO. Just keep in mind, the higher number you pick for the ISO, the more you will pick up on your image, but the more noise you will have as well. So temperature really has a big impact on this, as you can see in our 11th episode of Galactic Hunter. The Milky Way. The settings for the Milky Way mostly depend on what lens you're using. If you'd like to know our pick for the three best affordable lenses to photograph the Milky Way, check out our video and blog post about it. The aperture you'll want to use is often the widest possible one, so that you can capture as much light as possible in the shortest amount of time before seeing star trails appear in your images. There is a trick though, and we learned it the hard way. But even if you have a camera lens that allows for, let's say, an aperture number of 1.8, we recommend not going below f4. The reason for that is that if your aperture is too low, you will see some slight distortions around the edges. This is often not noticeable on daytime images, but very visible in astrophotography as the stars won't look round and sharp. In short, pick the lowest possible aperture your camera lens allows, but try not to go below f4. For the shutter speed, do the 500 rule. 500 divided by the focal length of your lens equals the longest exposure time you can do without getting star trails. An example would be 24mm lens, which would be 500 over 24, which would equal about 20 seconds. Note that this is for full frame cameras. If you're using a crop sensor, you will need to do even shorter exposures. For the last three types of targets, uh, recall that the ISO will depend on temperature, but the F number will stay the same. Well, it actually won't. If you're using a telescope, it will act as your lens. So if you're going to be photographing deep sky objects with a camera lens, you'll just need to repeat what we advised for the Milky Way. So the lower the better, but, but 4 is a great number for ensuring you don't have any coma on the edges. Star clusters. Star clusters can be tricky to photograph. We choose to do 30 seconds for our exposures. We actually started with 3 minutes, but quickly realized that this was not necessary. Doing more than 30 seconds for clusters that don't have nebulosity like the Pleiades will make the stars too bright and 
is that glue can often hide other stars if it is a globular cluster. This is why we now do 30 second exposures for pretty much all the star clusters we image. Galaxies. Although we used to always do 6 minute exposures for galaxies, for example M101, the pinwheel galaxy from the first episode of Galactic Hunter, we now find it better to do 3 minutes. Cutting the exposure time for each shot does not make much of a difference in the quality of the stacked image. Most importantly, it cuts the chances that we'll have to trash some of the files due to wind gusts or cars passing by. Nebulae. We prefer to take 6 minute exposures for nebulae, unless they are very, very bright like the Orion Nebula, where we would do 3 minutes instead. We also choose to do 3 minutes instead of 6 if we feel there might be a few gusts of wind, or if we are imaging from a location during the weekend where we know cars will pass by often. During a very quiet weeknight, we definitely prefer to do 6 minutes as we think it gives us more of the very faint gases. video helped you out. Um, if you have any comments about what we use for our settings or if you have any advice on your own settings, go ahead and tell us why and comment down below. We'll see you in the next video and clear skies. <laughs>